You know, we almost have 100 episodes of Cooking Chris's Dishes. We're very, very close to it, and I still can't figure out how to handle a skillet around a camera. Now, will we're this come that. out before? Not sure. That's why I, I said we're close to. We might be over by I now. I think we'll be over by the time this one hits. Hey, we've hit 100! <laughs> Hi, welcome back to another edition of Cooking Chris's Dishes with the Good Old Boy. That's me, where we're cooking up dishes straight from recipes that crock.com, which is my beautiful wife's cooking blog. Today is a treat. This is one heck of a delicious dish. This is one of them dishes that I made and I was frowning the whole time. You see, <laughs> ever since I was little, I wasn't much for Swiss cheese. Didn't care for it, didn't like it one bit. It's just not my favorite kind of cheese. I like cheddar, I like provolone, I like mozzarella, but Swiss is just something that just always turned me off. And then Chris said, hey, why don't you cook up a quickie and do this bacon, mushroom, and Swiss chicken recipe? And I was like, but I'll have to cook it and eat it on but camera. But I even told you that you could do Swiss for the camera. Right. And then you could do, like, Havarti or um, what was it? smoked Gouda? Mm -hmm. I told you. You could, that's how I got him to finally try it. Is I told him he could. Um, By the way, I'm fixing the camera. We're vlogging at the same time we're doing this. So. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but. By telling him he could use a different cheese was how I actually got him to make it to begin with. Yeah. And then I made it with the Swiss, and I tried it with the Swiss because that's what it called for. And it was Gouda. <laughs> it was really Gouda. I enjoyed it a lot. So I'm very happy to show this recipe to y'all today. And it goes a little something like this. You need, well, chicken. Uh, the recipe calls for six chicken breasts. This depends on how big of a group that you're feeding. These are rather large chicken breasts, and the ones that are in the finished product are even bigger than that. And so you figure one chicken breast is one meal. You got four people in your family. There you go. Four chicken breasts is what we're using right here. You also need three strips of crisply cooked bacon. We're using ripe bacon because it's a little thicker and it's my favorite. Um, but you need three of that, and then with your drippings that are left over, your bacon grease that you have that cooks out of the bacon, out of that fat, reserve your drippings and then I'm using about a tablespoon of that leftover bacon fat and I've got it heating right here for a little bit later. This is how you're going to flavor your chicken as well as your soups. You also need one can of cream of chicken soup and one can of drained mushrooms and then of course baby Swiss cheese. What makes it baby Swiss? I well, I grabbed baby Swiss for this shot, but last time we just used regular Swiss. What's the difference between baby Swiss and regular Swiss? Someone who knows a lot more about Swiss cheese will have to answer that. I tell you what, pop quiz y'all, or whoever's quickest on Google for the comments, <laughs> what's the difference between baby Swiss and old man Swiss? Well, I don't know what, what you call it. Regular. Yeah. So now I've got nothing to knock the Swiss about. I like their chocolate, I like their cheese, and I like their army knives, so... Good there job, go. Swiss people. <laughs> all right, so the first thing you want to do, like I said, is brown up your bacon. Get it all nice and crispy. And then I've just got it sitting on our um, very fine china. Actually, it's just a paper plate with a paper towel. I'll set that aside. And after that, I'm going to take my chicken. And I forgot my tongs. I'll use a fork. I had to wash up a lot of these dishes after all this cooking. Oh, my forgot to wash word. My tongs. I am like so... So, one of these days we're going to make you actually do all the things you claim to do. <laughs> I, I That'll guess, never get done. I guess all I'm going to do is sit around here and put my feet up and eat my bonbons while you do all the work. <laughs> is that what I need to do? Anywho, <laughs> let's get back to the show. He don't like the truth telling. <laughs> You want to take your chicken breasts and put them back in your bacon grease and let them cook up. All you're going to do is brown them up on both sides two or three minutes. And all that's going to do is add a lot of flavor to that chicken. Let me wash my hands real quick after handling that. <clears throat> I guess I could have reused that fork. Ooh, I found my tongs. <laughs> I was just cooking my bacon in these, so these are perfect. Be careful with that 
that metal on my nonstick. I just won't touch the skillet. Are you telling me you just use those to cook bacon? Yes. In my nonstick skillet? Yes, but I never touch the skillet. <laughs> All right, and while this is frying up on both sides, and again, all I'm doing is browning that chicken. You didn't I'll use take our trick. Bacon. Our trick? Our trick to get crisp bacon is to snip it up. If no, I, I should have did that. Uh, that's how, that's our trick to get crisp bacon, and I totally forgot about doing that. Gosh, I should have. Yeah. Uh, one thing you can do to cook up the bacon really evenly is snip it up as, and drop it in the pan, and then as it fries up, it's all gonna fry a little more evenly. Because, you know, bacon will bubble up and bend and do all kinds of stuff. And this is one way to keep from doing that so you don't burn your bacon. You see there's little, some burnt parts on there. But it's okay. Yeah, I like the crunchy. I do too. And all I want to do is chop up my bacon. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just crumble. We've got to test it and make sure this bacon's good. No, I'm not quiet. <laughs> not good. All right. And that's it. Just a rough chop. Bacon, but it really does add flavor. Well, that's partially because you're cooking the chicken in the bacon. Yeah, so bacon crumbled up. That's the last time we'll see that bacon till the end. And then when your chicken gets brown, you're not cooking this chicken all the way through, you're browning it just like that. See how it's getting brown right there? I'm gonna turn the heat up just a wee bit more, too. Now, the good thing about this recipe is if you don't overcook your chicken, these chicken breasts turn out so juicy and flavorful. You know how, like, when you cook chicken, especially breasts, that white meat can get a little dry or a lot dry. And not just dry, but also kind of... Chalky. Chalky, yeah. yeah. And mealy and... That means you cooked it too long, yeah. too hot. And this, ba and I can tell you from here, uh, we just did a quickie for this over here. And I let Ad have the the final pretty shot. I let that was her dinner for tonight, and she went crazy over it. And I took a bite of it, and it's moist and tender. It's juicy, and it's got so much flavor in it. If you'll notice, there's no salt, there's no pepper. You don't need it. There's going to be enough flavor from the bacon, as well as the soup and the mushrooms and the Swiss cheese. You're not going to need any other any other seasonings for it. Well, there were um, we had a. We did this last weekend and had a mess up because we didn't get our final shot. Yeah. And so... That was my fault. I forgot to hit record. Well, um, so we had this in the fridge last week. <laughs> and it was the most popular of all the leftovers. Yeah. Miss Ed wanted to have that for... Yeah. It just... It, it, the leftovers were great. They stay nice and juicy. Yeah. Do you have two there? Have, no, it's just oh, where it's they're, just they're, they're split chicken breasts. Yeah. Oh, okay. But see, look, if I flip this open, that's a split chicken breast. That is completely raw right there. We're not cooking the chicken. We're just browning the chicken and soaking up more of that smoky bacon flavor. There we go. Finally, that heat's starting to rise up a little bit. I could even flip this over and and do the inside of the split breast. I don't think it'd hurt anything. It'll soak up even more that's flavor. Gonna be more flavor yeah. And it might go a little quicker, too. So we'll flip this over. And cook up them insides, but all you're doing is browning that chicken up, flavoring the outside. So while that is going, I'm gonna get my slow cooker ready. Put this over here, on a clean surface, just like that. I will unplug my hot plate. I bought my camera too. Sorry. Well, that's not gonna keep that warm, baby. That's okay. I don't need it to. It's it's fine now. Oh, it's got okay. a heat in it. Watch your hands. Hot. Michael, Michael, Michael. In fact, I'll even take this off here because I don't need it. Don't touch that hot plate. Put your Problem is... On. Sorry! <laughs> this is just the concerned woman who has much experience with me burning myself in the kitchen. <laughs> yes! Taking you to if you're the... using a hot plate... <laughs> be careful! Be careful because if it was just a plate, we call it a plate. There's a reason it's called a hot plate, and there's and really for those who no good place to grab watch it. Watch that plastic too, baby, back there. There you go. Um, yeah. For those of you not familiar with a hot plate, a hot plate will pull a lot more electricity than a slow cooker will. Yes. So you need to be very careful with plugging it in and leaving it on. It will throw your fuses or burn out your outlets. Very yeah, it's easily. not hard to do. 
it pulls a lot yes. of juice. Like we've got, and I can't really show you because of the cameras, but we've got these towers that have outlets all over them. You don't need that. And that's what's lighting up the place. We've got one, two, three, four different lights put shining a light on my pretty face. And that's pulling enough juice in itself. If you plug the hot plate into that tower, you don't you'll blow a fuse every time. We've gone dark many, many times doing this. So, get rid of the lid, put it over here. And now I want to do is take my chicken breasts and I'm going to fold them back up so that they'll fit and just put them in the bottom of my slow cooker. Just like that. There's that one. I'm going to fold back up. There we go. And then in there like that. And this one went in there like that. Make sure they're kind of in there equally. Now, don't get rid of this. You're not done. It's still hot. And now the next thing I want to do is take my chicken soup and pour it right into my skillet. Again, you're going to capitalize on the bacon flavor. That bacon grease that's in there. Now, this is where I don't want to use this or I will get in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Let's see if I can find something I sat back here less just, just wondering what you were planning on doing there. <laughs> yeah. Don't use metal on a non-stick surface or else it becomes non-non-stick. <laughs> and it's... And a, your ears start to hurt. It's a breeding ground for trouble, y'all. <laughs> it gives right. you an earache every time, it doesn't does. it? <laughs> now, all I'm doing, I'll set this on top of here one minute, is I'm going to stir that juice from them chicken breasts and the fat from the bacon. And I'm going to warm up that soup with it, and it's all going to mix together. Again, lots of flavor. Now, if you've ever used chicken, cream of chicken soup for anything, but there's a lot of flavor in there. And then when you mix that with bacon, it well, becomes a heavenly little sauce. It's, uh, it's enough to make somebody smile. <laughs> and if you, by chance, are anti-cream soup, you can look on the blog, and we have a homemade cream soup version if yep. you want to go and make all those steps. If you want to do those steps to make your own, um, we clearly have no problem using canned soup ourselves, but we know some people prefer not to. Mm -hmm. So Which is fine. You can do it either way you want, but this is like the super quick way. Any way you want it, that's the way you need it. Sorry, she put an earworm in there. So now my soup is mixed up with my chicken juices and my bacon juices. And now I'm backwards here, so I will <laughs> put it all back to this side of the skillet and go this way so I don't knock my camera over. Lord have mercy. You know, we almost have 100 episodes of Cooking Chris's Dishes. We're very, very close to it. And I still can't figure out how to handle a skillet around a camera. Now, will we're this come now. out before? Not sure. That's why I, I said we're close to. We might be over by I now. I think we'll be over by the time this one hits. Hey, we've hit 100. <laughs> what I'm getting at is I'm still learning. So That's all right. Here's the thing. You know to what? make good food, to make good food, you don't have to be an absolute expert in the kitchen. No. You could be an idiot and still make good food. <laughs> Well, we don't call people names first. Well, I'm not saying you are one. You're not. You're your camera, by the way. Well, I know. The, the, the guy. Like I said, you star, could be an idiot in the kitchen. The, the star gets mad when you knock the camera. He does. I, I, I know that from personal But I'm going to tell you something right now, y'all. The star is not perfect. <laughs> he's cute, but he's not perfect. <laughs> so I'm going to make sure that all gets on top of the chicken right there, just like that. Oh, yeah. It smells good. Smells like bacon in here. Smells like bacon. Tastes like chicken. 
you can't you can't go wrong with that. Dish. But back to your original point, I think you know, it life is about learning. Period. Yeah. So if you stop learning, we've been doing this for on the day of this taping. Oh yeah. Right now. And we'll probably say this through three different episodes. Yeah, then you'll see it like a month spread mm -hmm. out. <laughs> a year ago today, June, what, June? June? <laughs> January 22nd of 2016, we taped our first Cook and Chris's dishes. And fast forward now a year later, we're almost to 100. And it's been exciting. It's been awesome. It's been fun. Yeah. And I've learned a lot. I'm, again, not an expert. I'm no chef. I just like to tell jokes in the kitchen, but I have learned a lot over the past year. Evidently not how to not burn myself or not use metal on nonstick. I'm not really sure what I learned. You've learned a lot. But you're, you have, you're a lot more confident in the kitchen now. I, I am. I'm confident that I will still burn myself and I will probably still use metal on nonstick, but I'm going to cook up some good food when I do it. Well, by the way, if you can't tell what I'm doing. I'm taking my mushrooms that, again, have been drained and sprinkling them over the top of my chicken. And just so everyone knows, as he's cramming his hand in that little mushroom can, he used a uh, non-sharp edge I, uh, uh, yeah. can opener because I'm sure everybody's like going, oh! By the way, <laughs> you know what? Remember I said I'm still learning? Oh, honey. I'm glad I used a non-sharp because I honestly wasn't thinking about that. <laughs> by this time next year, by this time next year, it's going to be like, <laughs> it's going to be, hi, welcome back to Cooking Grizz's Dishes. It's now been two years since we've been cooking shows for you. <laughs> All right. So my lid Put it on the top, and then you want to cook this on low for four to five hours. Yes. What you're looking for is your chicken to be done. So if you want to go in there and stab that chicken, make sure that everything is clear and not pink, not red. That's what well, you do. Or you, you could use a, um, meat a meat thermometer and cook it to how hot? Um, you definitely want to cook it. To 165 is what's recommended to be done. I usually cook my chicken to 170 because I like the texture. If you are so, I get emails all the time from people who are struggling with chicken in the crock pot and they um, get really, really frustrated. And if that's you and you're having a hard time of knowing when something's done versus overdone, get yourself a um, a meat thermometer that has a probe on it. Is ours back there? Can you show them ours? Should be right here. Here's the probe. Is the other part there? Well, there's that. But see, what that yeah, is, is, is he can stick that. Now, you're going to want to be careful, and the metal parts need to not touch anything other than the chicken. So you're going to stab it into the a fatty part, of, not fatty, a thick part the of the chicken. The thickest part of the chicken. And lay that in there so that the metal doesn't get up against the crock pot. Mm -hmm. Right. In, you want to be yeah. in, inside the bread. And then you can the plug that. Please, we don't need you doing the body part stuff again. Here I go making a boob yeah. out of myself. <laughs> Then those, those meat thermometers, you can actually set to the temperature, so it'll make an alarm go off to tell you when it hits 170. Um, <clears throat> and so you put it in there, the actual That's part that you set the timer on, or the, the temperature on, actually sets outside of the slow cooker while the probe stays inside. Yes. And that also is an oven safe probe, so when you're cooking something in the oven, you can use it in the oven. I've even used ours in the grill. Yep, I've before used ours too. in the grill before too. Yep, that's how you get perfectly cooked meat with a thermometer. Yep, and experience in the kitchen. Yep, or it'll no teach you how to like eyeball that. it better. Yeah. Too. Well, this y'all is what she looks like when she's done. Now you'll notice this already has the stuff on top. It's got the bacon and the cheese. What you want to do is after your chicken is thoroughly cooked through, each chicken breast gets a slice of your Swiss cheese, just lay it over the top of your chicken breast, and then take that sprinkled, take that sprinkled bacon and crumble it over the top. Take that crumbled bacon, and I'm just going to make this better and better. Oh. Take the crumbled bacon 
and just put it over the top of the cheese, make sure it makes good contact with the cheese. And if you've got a dog who loves bacon and he's been real patient with mommy right there, Aww. you give him some. And put your lid back on it and cook it for about 8, 10, 12 minutes. The, the recipe says 15. Just kind of watch it because you don't want the cheese to melt and slide off that chicken. You want it to melt on top of that chicken and then serve it out. So you can see this has been sitting there a little bit longer. So some of that cheese has come off. But I will take me... Ooh, that's a great big one too. That's right, you got those giant chicken breasts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Another tip, if you're having a... Oh, that's just... That. That's gorgeous. That's a beautiful shot right that's there. That's just gorgeous. Yeah. If you're also having trouble with chicken breasts and you don't mind dark meat, boneless, skinless thighs are an easy way. Yep. I think it's easier to cook them and cook them too. Check that out again. Just <laughs> And I presented that. It's well. also easier, I think, to cook um, chicken breast tenders or tenderloins, um, which are like strips. You just cook them for a lot less time. Mm -hmm. So probably two, two and a half hours for them for a recipe like oh, this. Oh, watch this. Like butter. Uh, <laughs> I'll wash that later. I don't need it now. This is one of the largest chicken breasts in that package. These are some of the biggest ones that I've ever seen you buy. Now, watch this. I took a knife, and then as I laid it down through there, I realized I don't need a knife. Watch my fork. Right straight through that chicken. It's now, tender. But it's not chalky. You see, it's no, still No, it's not moist. chalky. It's moist. Yeah, if he had cooked that for like six, Ooh. seven, eight hours, because look at how, that is perfect right now. But if he had cooked that for eight hours, it would be like this chewy, chalky mess. Perfect bite right there. You got equal ratio of bacon, chicken, cheese, and mushroom. Sorry, we just went and saw Hidden Figures, so I'm all about math right now. What did that have to do with math? It was perfect ratio. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, huh? <laughs> that was a very good movie. That's a very good chicken. Mm -hmm. That's comforting. I have a confession. I had a very similar dish to this Man. for lunch at one of our favorite restaurants. Mm -hmm. And the whole time I was like, "Man, that stuff at home is better than this." <laughs> I have a confession. What? I like Swiss cheese now. <laughs> mm. I think you you find most of the time that when I make you try things you don't like, you find that you like them. Something I just discovered in all this. What? If you even save some of that bacon for after you melted it down and kind of crumbled on top, More crunchy. then you get some crunchy into it too. That bacon, only three strips, adds enough salt along with the soup for the whole dish. You're not going to need to salt this. Mm. There's enough flavor with the soup and the bacon and the mushrooms. It's very yummy. You don't, there, I didn't, no salt, no pepper, no basil, no thyme. Speaking of time, we're out of time. Yes. So I will say this. Make that, y'all. Make that. It is worth it. It's easy. Not that many ingredients. And your family will be extremely happy. And it's really cool because a single breast is a single serving. You could take that to lunch two or three days in a week. Yeah, that's what we did the mm. other day. And if you can't find Swiss cheese, we've also tried it with Havarti. Yep. I haven't tried it with the Gouda yet, but... Oh, I bet it's good. I bet it's good. I bet it's good. <laughs> Taking my jokes. Ain't she cheesy? <laughs> but we want to thank you all for watching another episode of Cooking Chris's Dishes with the Good Old Boy. If you like what you saw, please, for the love of chicken, subscribe down below and become a member of what we like to call the Crock Posse. Give this video a like. Go over to Facebook. Check us out on As Good As It Gets Group. Is that how we say it? Yeah. The Group. As Good As It Gets. And. We're going to let our crock posse grow a little bit over there as well. And y'all keep watching, and we'll keep cooking, hopefully for a whole nother year, mainly because this is good food. <laughs> and all will be well. Bye, y'all.